Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Makara Sea Turtle. This is an interesting little watch that I've been wearing for uh, coming up on a year now. It's It's been about 10 months or so. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at it, and I'll give you my impressions over you know, the course of that time and see how it's held up and if I still like it as much as I did when I initially unboxed it. All right, on to the size comparison. So I don't have a ton of watches. Um, this is the only automatic watch that I own. I do have a couple others I'll show you here though. Um, just for comparison's sake, here is a Pierre Lanier. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I apologize. Um, this is the 214H1 model whatever that means. This was a gift, I apologize. Um, so this is kind of a dress watch and you can see it is very tiny and um, especially when you turn it to the side it just gets dwarfed. This is a very very large watch um, and I have one more here for you. My last remaining smartwatch um, that I never wear anymore. It is the Martian Notifier. So this is a little bit closer in size. It's still smaller in terms of the case. And thickness-wise, it's pretty close as well because it has a um, it has a rechargeable battery as well as a quartz movement in there. So I just noticed that it stopped moving and I will need to replace that battery. But yeah, it's a, it's a fairly large watch. Also, since this is, you know, uh, my channel, I'll go ahead and grab a knife for comparison and a pen for comparison. First up we have the ZT-0450CF. So you can see close length and then open. Not that it matters, but there you go. And for a pen, I'll grab the only one that I have right here with me at the moment. It's going to be Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl. And you can see there how it kind of sizes the watch. The piston is out because I was cleaning all of my pens in preparation for 30 days, 30 inks. Check out that on my channel. Um, but let's go ahead and get into what I like about it. All right. First thing is the design. Um, that's the reason I bought this watch. I love the design, the geometric shape and everything to it. It's, it's gorgeous. Love, love, love this thing. It's very, very angular. Um, it patinas because of the materials used, which are um, CUS, CUS, yes, CUSN8 bronze. CUSN8 bronze. There we go. Um, so that's going to develop a very, very nice patina, which you can see here has developed a lot over the course of the last year, especially on things like the um, a crown there and on the back. There's a lot of patina. You can polish this down and get it back to its shiny original, you know, color, but I bought this watch for the patina, so I'm certainly not going to do that, at least not at the moment. Next thing I like is the size. Um, this fits on my wrist very, very well. Um, I thought I had smaller wrists, but a lot of people have complained about this watch being too big, so maybe I don't. But yeah, I'm sitting on my wrist. I, it, it, it looks just fine to me, at least. It actually, in my opinion, looks a little bit more natural than, um, this one here, this one here looks a little small, at least to me. So I like the size of it a lot. Um, it is a 44 millimeter, uh, what do you call that, dial, and 52 millimeter lug to lug, as far as, uh, so 42 millimeter case, 52 to lug to lug. And the strap width, I also really like, it's 24. I think it fits the watch you know, pretty well. I think a 20, I hate 20 millimeter watch bands, and I really, really hate 18. Um, 22 to 24 is normally where I like it, so I appreciate that a lot. Build quality on this thing is very, very good as well. Um, the crown feels nice to screw down and unscrew. Um, the sapphire has a bit of a lip, but I kind of like it. It adds to the angular, and it is domed, by the way. You can see that there. This thing is built like a tank, though. It's It's fantastic. It, it feels very solid. I haven't experienced, I've had a few scratches on it, but I really can't see any of them now. Um, they seem to have worn down. There's a little bit of a nick right there. But that's about it. So it's it's built very, very well. And I, I really don't 
think you'd have to worry about damaging this watch too much. Bronze is a little soft, but if you're okay with it patinaing, you're you're probably fine with it anyway. And because it's brushed, it's going to take scratches really, really, really well. The sapphire is a very nice touch, which I, you know, you're kind of expecting in this price range, but it's nice of them to include it. If they go with mineral crystal, I think that would have been a bad misstep, and I actually might have skipped the watch altogether in that case. The hands on it are really nice. They're like this reflective um, gold color. You can see very well when I shine it up there against my light, they they shine back. So all this watch does have loom. The, um, the hands are really easy to read in most lights, at least. The date window is a really nice touch too. Now that I've had one, I, I really can't go back. Um, date window is just super useful. You can quick adjust the date by unscrewing it. It is a screw down crown, which is a fantastic touch as well. Pull it out once, and you can go ahead and adjust the date if it will do it. It's not going to, is it? There we go. So yeah, counterclockwise and you can adjust the date. It will not go the other way. So I'm going to get this back to three. While I talk about the movement. Um, the movement in this is a Seiko NH35A, uh, 24 joules, hacking seconds, 21,600 BPH and a 41 hour power reserve. Um, <clears throat> I really like the accuracy on this a lot. It's, it's very, very consistent. I'm, I'm getting um, not too bad times a day. Generally, after I've set it, the first day it will go up about three seconds, or I'm up three seconds fast. And then it will go up minutely by like 0 0.4, 0 0.8 seconds a day, which apparently is extremely accurate as far as automatics are concerned. And um, towards the end of the week, it will kind of slow down a couple seconds and then catch back up. The hacking seconds is a nice touch, so what that means is that when I go to pull this out, again, once we'll do the date, twice we'll stop the seconds, so you can set this time very accurately. So what I'll do is I'll generally wait for the seconds to get to the 12, so start of a new minute, and then you can adjust the minute and hour hands how you would like. Once you've adjusted it and you're like, oh yeah, sure, it's whatever time that is, click it in, and it'll start back up and then you push in the crown and screw it back down. So the hacking seconds is a very nice touch. In addition, the crown does have manual winding, so just unscrew it all the way. And if you do it counterclockwise, you'll see there's no resistance. If you do it clockwise, you'll hear a little bit and you'll feel some resistance. Let me see if I can get this on the microphone. Hopefully you can hear that. Very, very nice touch though. I like the um, hacking seconds, it's extremely useful and that's probably one of the features that I appreciate most about the movement apart from the accuracy. Watch is incredibly water resistant. It is a dive watch. So 300 meters of water resistance, which is almost a thousand feet, it's like 984. So that's fantastic. You really don't have to worry about doing anything with this watch. Um, if you're actually diving that deep, you're probably gonna have something a lot fancier, a lot more expensive with a, um, you know, healing escape valve and things like that, a uh, bezel. The The main difference between this watch and the prior model, which is the Octopus, is that this one doesn't have a rotating bezel. The Octopus does, if you can still find one of those. Both of these have been discontinued. The main reason I'm putting out a review for this one is the Makara Sea Turtle 2 is currently uh, available on their site for pre-order. Um, it's a little different. Well, I'll, when I get to the end, I'll point out the differences, but you can certainly go check that out. I'll leave a link down in the description if, you, if you're if you interested at all. The great water resistance. The case back on this is gorgeous. I'll go ahead and insert a clip kind of showing that off. It's a really, really, really nice little turtle design. And it has the material written, the depth, limited edition, Makara, things like that. But it's just, it's just really, really cool. Their octopus had something similar. I think I prefer the sea turtle design, though. Might just be me. Next thing is going to be the packaging. So if you watch the unboxing video, you've already seen this. But basically, you get it in this black box that says Mocker on it. Sorry about that. I have my ISO set to automatic for some reason. So it's going to light up 
like the 4th of July on this thing. Um, it's disgusting, but I haven't really kept anything in here. But basically, you have a little, um, a little band. Slip your watch up under. A little cover, and you can set your watch straps and things in here. A little zipper pouch, and it has some cards from Makara, and it will also include the straps in it. But I'll get to those in a little bit. But the packaging is pretty nice. Um, I like that they gave you a reusable case that you may actually carry instead of just some wood or cardboard thing that you're going to throw away. Last thing up is the price. Um, so when this watch debuted, it was $395, basically $400. I think that's a, a decent price for this. Um, I probably wouldn't pay too much over that, but it's not a bad price. Um, however, I picked this up off of Mass Drop for $200, bucks, which in my opinion, it is one of the better deals I've ever gotten on, on anything. Um, Mass Drop, their deals are kind of hit and miss sometimes. This was a really solid one. You can currently, if you get the Sea Turtle 2, you can pick it up for $2.99 pre-order price. They knocked off about $100. So if you're interested and you want it, they have it in um, bronze, steel, and black PVD steel. So check those out if you're interested and you want to save, you know, about $100. I would, if you don't like the design, I would skip it, but if you do, definitely check them out. On to the neutral. First thing up is the weight. Um, I do not have a scale to measure this with, but this thing weighs a ton. It is gargantuan. It's, it's just, it's, it's a massive, massive watch. Realistically, and I'm not exaggerating, it feels like it weighs pretty close to the Leatherman Skeletal, which is, gosh, I think five or six ounces. Let me double check that here. But it, it weighs a ton. This one, this is a heavy, heavy watch. Now, I personally, sorry about that, I personally don't mind that, but a lot of people will, especially in the uh, watch community, just because a lot of them are going to, you know, when you're wearing a watch all day, the weight does add up. The, the skeletal is about five ounces, so this is probably four, four and a half. It's really heavy, really dense little thing. And bronze is, you know, heavier than steel and things like that anyway, so. But the the weight, if you're not used to it, will wear you down a little bit. It's, it's not nearly as light as most watches are. So just keep that in mind as you're picking this up. It is a very, very heavy watch, and, and you notice that weight. After you've worn it for a few hours, it'll, you won't notice on the wrist too much, but holding it here in my hand, it just weighs a ton. The watch is very thick as well. It is 17 millimeters thick. It is a very, very tall watch. Um, this NATO strap does add a bit of weight to it, but it's it's an extremely tall watch. And part of it's that dome sapphire. Part of it's just the, the watch in general. It's just, it's massive. It's huge, huge, huge. This is a big watch, no doubt. Um, again, I like the size, the weight and thickness, not, they're not really demerits to me, but I don't love them, so that's why they're here. The indices are all painted, they're not applied. The Sea Turtle 2 does have applied indices, but um, these are all just painted on. Now there's two variations of this watch. There's this one, which is the regular, and the Hawk Bill, which looks a bit, mm, a bit more refined, maybe. Um, the Hawk Bill does have applied indices, which is strange. The hands are also um, ever so slightly different. The hour hand is in appearance similar to the minute hand. It, instead of this being this um, this triangular shape to kind of match the 12. So if, if that really you know bothers you, maybe check out the Hawk Bill mm -hmm. version. They do offer it in the same dial colors, which are teal, maroon, and black. So. Um, the reason I got the teal actually is because as brawn patinas, it turns to a very, very similar color. See if I can kind of show you here. You can kind of see right there where it's patinaing. Um, you're going to kind of get that, or even there, you're going to kind of get a similar shade. So I figured, you know, in a thousand years when this is all patinaed, completely covered, sitting at the bottom of the ocean, it'll at least match the dial. The loom on here is pretty good. I'll include a loom shot. Um, it doesn't last super long. They are using um, Super Luminova C1 and it is on the hands and the indices. So any part on here that's white, apart from the date window, is loomed. 
the rubber strap this comes with. Um, so this comes with two straps. It comes with a leather strap and a rubber strap. The leather strap will not be mentioned in the neutral because I hate it. But the rubber strap is pretty nice. Um, here it is here. It's just a kind of made to fit rubber strap, if that makes any sense. Um, it is colored and both straps include a bronze buckle to match the bronze on the watch. And I'll go ahead and include a shot of what it looks like on the wrist here. It fits pretty well. It um, it sits almost flush with the watch. There are a few parts where it's not even. And the biggest thing that bothers me is that it sits down on the bottom set of the uh, spring bar pins, the spring bar holes. Um, we'll get to that later as well. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the dislike. Okay, so very first thing is this leather strap. Um, I currently don't have the bronze buckle on it. I have it on, on another watch, but here it is. It is crap. Um, I hate it. It's fairly thick, which isn't bad, but if you can kind of see here, it's really just a bunch of layered material. It's not nice, thick, supple leather. It's kind of crappy. Um, the strap holders are very, very flimsy, super, super thin. They're, they're not nice at all. Um, I really, really can't stand this watch strap. It's very unpleasant to wear. It doesn't, it feels leathery, but it doesn't wear like leather should. I don't know. I, I'm, I put this uh, watch strap on initially, swapped it out for the rubber really, really quickly. And then when I found out about the bottom uh, rung on the spring bar holes, I switched it back to this, but really only temporarily until I got the current strap I have on there, which is the um, Heavy NATO from Clockwork Synergy. The reason I picked that one is because it has the bronze um, buckle things, and it matches, so they patina as well. You can kind of see some of that there. But yeah, really, really nice um, strap. I plan on getting a higher quality NATO soon, but it's the only one I can find with bronze. Last thing I dislike about the watch, I will go ahead and insert another clip here, and it is the bottom hole for the spring bars. Um, the spring bars do not stay in there. And it's really, really, really annoying to try to get a strap to sit in there and stay. Um, this will pop off your wrist, at least for me. It popped off my wrist several times when keeping a, a strap in there. And that's the only strap that the rubber, or the only holes that the rubber strap can fit into. So it kind of makes it, to me at least, unwearable, which is very, very unfortunate. Because I do like that matching rubber strap quite a bit. On to the conclusion. I really like this watch. Um, I've had it since last December, early December, and I've worn it consistently. It has made me sell off my uh, main smartwatch, which is the Huawei watch, and uh, my other main watch, which was a Quartz Fossil Coachman. Sold those both off, not to pay for this, but just because after I got this, I didn't need them. I, I absolutely love this watch. I'm actually looking at a few more automatics at the moment, so my exp my collection may be expanding. Uh, my wife's not in love with that because automatics aren't cheap, but you know you can get them in fairly affordable price ranges. They go from anywhere from like 50 bucks, try to stay away from those, up to you know $500,000. Just depends on what you're looking for. So overall, I think this is a fantastic watch. I love it to death, and in my opinion, it was a great place for me to start out because instead of making me hate automatic watches for the things that they sometimes do wrong, which is like inaccuracy, price, things like that, I love it. It's fantastic and I look very, very much forward to getting more. Um, I've considered getting the Sea Turtle too. I don't think I will just because I have it already and I'd want it in bronze again or maybe the black. The black looks really good, but eh, probably not. But if you have any questions about this watch or anything, definitely um, leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to help you out. If you need links to any of this stuff, I'll try to leave it down in the description for you. And just to touch on the differences between the Sea Turtle and the Sea Turtle 2, the Sea Turtle 2 comes in bronze, stainless steel, and black coated stainless steel. It's a PVD coating. The exact same size, exact same crown, same movement, same thickness, same lug width, a lot of the same stuff. There are applied indices. Um, filled in with black. So the black model looks very, very nice. The hands are silver, and then they have the minute hand as like an orange outline. So if you like orange, which I do, um, it's gonna, probably going to be pretty appealing to you. 
But check that out, and um, if you're interested, I'd probably go ahead and pick one up at a discount because at $400, it's an okay price, but uh, I don't know. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out my other stuff, and I will have reviews of this strap and the other strap that I use this watch with or on, which is, sorry about that, which is this black Perlon strap um, coming up somewhat soon within the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye out for those as well, and have a good day. Bye, guys.